Dari Dewan Budaya mengumumkan perarakan masuk Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan diiringi Pengurusan Tertinggi Universiti Sains Malaysia. Hadirin dipersilakan berdiri. Hadirin sekalian, nyanyian lagu Negaraku dan Menara Ilmu. Universiti Sains Malaysia menara ilmu tercinta jadi tumpuan antara bangsa untuk segala cita-cita berinovasi berteknologi berwawasan berkualiti biar usaha kami bersemi hasrat dalam berseri. Universiti Sains Malaysia menara ilmu tercinta jadi tumpuan antara bangsa untuk segala cita-cita. Hadirin dipersilakan duduk. Anak kecil berlari ke pekan, gelak ketawa, tanda gembira. Selamat datang, saya ucapkan salam disembah pembuka bicara. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Yang berbahagia, Datuk Dr. Awang Adik Hussein, Pengerusi Lembaga Gubernur Universiti Sains Malaysia. Yang diraihkan, yang berbahagia, Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan, Naib Chancellor Universiti Sains Malaysia. Ahli-ahli Lembaga Gubernur Universiti Sains Malaysia, Ahli-ahli Jawatan Kuasa Pengurusan Universiti JKPU Universiti Sains Malaysia, Pegawai-pegawai utama Universiti Sains Malaysia yang dihormati, Ahli-ahli keluarga Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan, tetamu-tetamu jemputan, 
tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dihormati sekalian sama ada di Dewan mahupun di atas talian melalui Facebook dan YouTube Live University Science Malaysia. Selamat datang ke Majlis Syarahan Umum yang diadakan sempena dengan perlantikan profesor baru bagi Pusat Pengajian Kejuruteraan Elektrik dan Elektronik University Sains Malaysia. Tepukan paling gemuruh buat Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan. Untuk makluman hadirin yang dihormati sekalian, siri syarahan umum peringkat Universiti Sains Malaysia terbahagi kepada tiga jenis. Pertama, syarahan umum peringkat antarabangsa. Kedua, syarahan umum peringkat kebangsaan. Ketiga, syarahan umum pelantikan profesor baru seperti mana yang kita hadir sekarang. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dihormati sekalian, majlis syarahan ini bertujuan memperkenalkan ketokohan akademik profesor di samping perkongsian ilmu ke arah melahirkan lebih ramai intelek dan cendekiawan bagi menyemarakkan lagi dunia akademia negara. Hadirin yang dihormati sekalian, ombak lautan berkejar-kejaran, menyapa pantai, irama kesyahduan, doa dilafazkan penuh keikhlasan. Semoga majlis dilimpahi keberkatan. Dengan ini, saya dengan segala hormatnya ingin menjemput Ustaz Muhammad Shukri Osman, pengarah Pusat Islam Universiti Sains Malaysia ke pentas untuk memimpin bacaan doa. Dipersilakan. Al-Fatihah. A'udzubillahi minasyaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahillahi rabbil alamin. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Maliki yaumiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. Ihdinas siratal mustaqim. Siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil maghdubi 'alaihim waladdallin. Amin. Wa qala rabbukum ad'uni astajib lakum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahillahi rabbil alamin. Hamdan yuafi ni'amahu wa yukafi'u mazidah Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yang bagi di janani wajihika wa azimi sultanik Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nuril anwar wa siril asrar wa firyagil aghyar al miftahil babil yasar Sayyidina wa maulana muhammadanil mukhtar wa alihi al athhar wa ashabihi al akhyar adada ni'amillahi wa ifdalih اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا ولوالدينا ورحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ولجميع المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم الأموات اللهم يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم pada petang yang penuh kesyaduan ini ya Allah kami bersaksi dengan namamu ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim kami menadah tangan merayu memohon dan berdoa ya Allah Engkau berkatilah majlis yang kami adakan pada petang ini, Ya Allah. Allahumma Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Engkau berkatilah dan cucurilah perlindungan dan kesejahteraan kepada seluruh para pemimpin Universiti Sains Malaysia. Khususnya kepada yang berbahagia Datuk Dr. Awang Adik bin Husin dan yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan dan seluruh warga kepimpinan Universiti Sains Malaysia yang kami kasih ini. Allahumma ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim jadikanlah seluruh warga Universiti Sains Malaysia sebagai sebuah keluarga yang bersatu hati dan berkasih sayang ya Allah hindarilah daripada perpecahan permusuhan dan sengketa ya Allah malah titipkanlah kasih sayang dan hubungan kekeluargaan dengan ikatan yang erat penuh kemesraan di dunia dan di akhirat Allahumma ya Allah ya Fattah ya Alim ya Zal Jalal wal Ikram hanya padamu, Ya Allah, kami doakan agar engkau berkati majlis ilmu ini yang telah disusun dengan rapi. Dengan payungan rahmat dan kasih sayangmu, Ya Allah, engkau titipkan keberkatan dari langit dan bumi. Engkau rezekikan kajian ilmiah ini sebagai jariah ilmu yang bermanfaat kepada ummah manusia sejagat. Dengan kebesaran rahmatmu, Ya Allah. Berkatilah Majlis Syarahan Umum Pelantikan Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Arikan Jadikanlah majlis dan kajian ini Asbab kebaikan dunia akhirat Untuk mendapat keberkatan 
dan curahan rahmat kasih sayangmu ya Allah buat bekalan perjalanan dunia hingga ke akhirat Allahumma ighfir lana dhunubana wa li walidina warhamhuma kama rabbana sigara Allahumma ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim pada detik yang penuh kebahagiaan ini juga ya Allah kami titipkan kuntuman tahmid dan doa ya Allah cucurilah dan rahmatilah kedua ibu ayah kami ya Allah kedua ibu ayah profesor Rafiq ya Allah Kedua ibu ayah seluruh muslimin muslimat warga Universiti Sains Malaysia ya Allah. Kasihilah kedua ibu ayah kami ya Allah. Lihatlah kedua ibu ayah kami dengan pandangan rahmat dengan penuh kasih sayangmu ya Allah. Kasihan belaslah kepada mereka ya Allah seperti mana mereka telah mengasihi dan menjaga kami sejak kami kecil ya Allah. Allahumma ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim. Kini mereka telah pun tua ya Allah. Engkau tukarlah segala jasa mereka dalam bentuk pahala yang berpanjangan ya Allah. Engkau tempatkanlah mereka di tempat yang tertinggi di syurga Firdaus Al-A'la ya Allah. Allahumma ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim. Kini hari ini kami hidup ya Allah dengan doa dan berkat kasih sayang mereka berdua ya Allah. Sehinggalah kami berada di tempat yang tertinggi yang telah Engkau muliakan. Allahumma rabbana alaika tawakkalna wa ilaika anabna wa ilaika al-masir. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هريتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير وأفضل الصلاة أتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد الخاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين تقبل الله منكم آمين آمين يا رب العالمين سموغا برمبونان بتان اني دلمحي كبركاتانيا مجلس مراكمكن اوچاپان ترما كاسيه كبدا استاذ شكري دي اتاس تيتيپان دعاء سبنتار تادي حاضرين دان حاضرات يان دي هورماتي سكاليان كيتا تلاح پون ممسوكي الاف يان كدوا لانگيت كيان تربوكا Jarak antara dua benua kian rapat bagaikan kampung setempat. Bertepatanlah dengan teknologi terkini dan tajuk syarahan umum pada hari ini. Tajuk yang bakal disampaikan ialah pengesanan dan kegentian perjalanan luar biasa ke alam fotonik. Ladies and gentlemen, the title in English, Sense and Viability, My Fantastic Photonics Journey. Oleh itu, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput Profesor Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Fadil Ain, Dekan Pusat Pengajian Kejuteraan Elektrik dan Elektronik mengeringi Profesor yang diraihkan yang berbahagia, Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan ke atas pentas bagi sesi pengenalan seterusnya diikuti dengan syarahan umum oleh yang berbahagia Datuk. Dengan segala hormatnya, dipersilakan. Fazal Rafid Muhammad Adikan dilahirkan pada 9 Julai 1975 di Kuala Lumpur. Beliau merupakan anak sulung kepada pasangan Muhammad Adikan Hasan dan Fatimah Ahmad. Mendirikan rumah tangga dengan Mazari Susanti Ibrahim dan dikurniakan empat orang cahaya mata. Rafid mendapat pendidikan awal di Sekolah Rendah Kebangsaan Lasal. Sentul Kuala Lumpur sebelum menerima tawaran ke Maktab Rendah Sains Mara Terendak Melaka untuk pengajian menengah rendah. Seterusnya, Rafi meneruskan pembelajaran di Maktab Rendah Sains Mara Taiping Perak dan diterima masuk ke Grantham College di Lincolnshire, United Kingdom untuk pengajian A-Level. Beliau menerima sarjana muda kejutan elektrik dan elektronik dari University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, United Kingdom, 
dan menamatkan pengajian di peringkat sarjana di Universiti Melayu pada tahun 1999 semasa beliau berkhidmat sebagai pengajar di institusi yang sama. Rafiq kemudian yang melanjutkan pelajaran ke peringkat Doktor Falsafah di Okto Electronics Research Center University of Southampton, United Kingdom. Rafiq mula berkhidmat di Universiti Melayu pada tahun 1997. Beliau telah menggalas banyak tanggungjawab sepanjang perkhidmatan beliau dalam bidang akademik. Dan kini beliau bertugas sebagai Knight Chancellor di Universiti Sains Malaysia. Dengan segala hormatnya dipersilakan yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan untuk menyampaikan syarahan. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi syrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa halul amdatan min lisani khafau qawli. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alim Muhammad. Terima kasih banyak kepada Prof. Fazil Ain, Dekan Pusat Pengajian Elektrikal dan Elektronik PSM. Yang berbahagia Datuk Dr. Awang Adik Hussein, Pengurusi Lembaga Governance Universiti Sains Malaysia. Juga Ahli LGU, Cik Nur Azam dan uh, Prof. Karim. Rekan-rekan di Pengurusan Tinggi USM, rekan-rekan akademik, rekan-rekan administrators dan pelaksana dan juga rekan-rekan yang, yang sedang menonton di, di Facebook Live dan juga YouTube. Uh, saya mohon kebenaran untuk bertutur dalam bahasa Inggeris memandangkan ada bekas-bekas pelajar saya dan barangkali uh, supervisor saya semasa PhD juga sedang menonton di UK sana. I hope you don't mind. Uh, first and foremost, th thank you so much for the introduction uh, from Prof. Azil. The slide. Thank you. Um, it has been a very colorful three days, four days. Uh, this is the third talk that I have to deliver. Um, three days ago, I was part of USM's team to defend I know to be a high COE. So that was the first profile talk. Um, hopefully, it was a success and we have our fourth high COE in USM. And then this morning we had our Board of Governors meeting. So obviously, in the agenda, the VC has to give the uh, update to the Board of Governors about, you know, about USM and under the leadership of uh, Dato Awang, this board is extremely focused and extremely supportive and very sharp. So you have to make preparations as well when it comes to giving talks or updating the, the board members. And of course, today is this talk, which uh, for, for, for whatever reason, I've given talks before, but giving talk, a professional talk in a graduation room makes someone very nervous. And I have to say I'm quite nervous as well. Um, so anyway, the title of my talk is Sense and Fibrility, My Fantastic Fortunate Student. Sense and Fibrility was uh, a, the title that I used uh, in the poster that won me the Section Prize Award in the House of Commons in the UK while I was doing my PhD. It was given to me by a fellow researcher called Rob Simpson, he's now in Singapore. And that picture over there is a picture of two lasers converging on a piece of uh, an optical chip. And that chip is actually very transparent because it's made of glass. But that chip is built on a, on a silicon wafer. So you look, if you look at that picture, it's, it's black in color. But essentially, there's a 50 micron, a very thin layer, the size of your hair, on top of that silicon layer. It's quite transparent. And what we do is that we actually essentially write optical circuits onto this chip. And this chip can be used to be sensors. And in this particular talk, I'll try to be as, you know, as not as technical as, as, uh, as uh, one would give a talk in technical terms. All right, so this journey will start in 2013. Why did I choose uh, 2013? 2013 is a very significant uh, uh, period in my life in the sense that I was appointed as a professor in UM in 2013. 
I was also appointed as the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development in UM in 2013 as well. But when it comes to research, two Azmans appeared in the news headline. The two Azman yang keluar dalam news. One is very famous, Tan Sri Azman Hashim, who you know, you know, you know from his uh, from M Bank fame. He donated 25 million ringgit to UM Ministry of Malaya. 20 million to build a new building for the Graduate School of Business and 5 million for a professorial, professorial chair. Um, he donated the same amount to USM where we built our uh, sports center. So then as my shame went into news, um, I was appointed as Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development. It was trialed by fire because I had to actually oversee the building of this particular building. The second Azman, you can see from that picture there, driving a bike, uh, that Azman lost his uh, leg in an accident five years before this picture was taken. Now, if you look closely at that particular picture, Azman is actually wearing uh, an artificial limb, and you can see that there's, a, there's some kind of a wire there that is attached to his thigh, and it goes into this bag. Azman was actually wearing an optical sensor. Azman made news headline because he was the first Malaysian uh, with special need who actually cycled for 1,000 kilometers, going from PJ all the way to Kota Tinggi and up, back up in the, from the East Coast and back to, to KL. Azman has been working with the School of Biomedical Engineering and uh, these two characters actually um, cross path with the field of photonics. How did that happen? So one of the things that I've been working on uh, in, in research was to actually put optical sensors. Um, and these optical sensors are made of glass, obviously, and they are as thin as your hair. And um, we jumped to the opportunity to work outside our lab, although we are quite green in that sense. So one of the things that we can do with optical sensors is that we can actually put these very thin glass into uh, a building or a structure. So if you look at this particular picture, there's an optical sensor that is actually embedded in that particular concrete. And this is a picture of uh, a colleague of mine, Dr. Shi, who was an academic then. This was our PhD student, Tidin Chai, and this is uh, Yoko Shen, one of the postdocs. And we had to figure out quite a lot of things. You know, we, we were working in a lab, we were playing around with these optical sensors, and then there's an opportunity for us to install the sensors in the building, in that award-winning building just now that I showed you, this is this building here, that went on to win lots of awards. Because the engineers wanted to know, if you build this building, it is a very new architectural setup. We wanted to know if the slab actually can hold a, f a certain amount of uh, a number of people. They needed a sensor there. So we actually took the opportunity and we actually installed the sensor. Although we never done that before, but we really we, we were we were green and we were we were keen to, to do this. And with regards to Azman, this particular artificial limb is custom made for his cycling purposes. He has another one, a blade one, when he you know, when he does running. And we actually put our sensors in there at various points within this artificial limb to check where are the pressure points because most people who actually use artificial limbs they will actually suffer from blisters because of the, um, you know, we don't distribute the, 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 the load well. So we use our optical sensors to see where are the pressure points so that we can actually design this better so that Azman or people like Azman can actually have a custom made artificial limb. So we went in and actually do this. Now I, I realize that I've not spoken about how these sensors work and then we'll get to that. Um, but these sensors are called fiber brack gratings. That's the name given to these sensors. These are very small, uh, about one or two centimeters long sensors, but can actually detect the slightest of pressure. If you stretch these sensors or you compress them, you can tell whether things are being stretched or compressed. The thing about fiber brack sensors or fiber brack gratings, they were discovered by accident back in 1978. Some researchers were doing something and uh, the results then came out the way they planned it to be, and hence the discovery of Bragg ratings. They reported that in a, in a publication, and um, a lot of work has been done since to perfect the manufacturing of these Bragg ratings. Now, speaking of accidents, um, 
I didn't plan to, uh, to go into uh, optical research. It was by accident. And within my research career, there were two very big accidents um, that actually made me who I was. The first was stumbling into optics. So I was doing my master's. I decided to do my master's because I didn't get a first class when I did my degree. And I always had, uh, I, would, I always get straight A's for my penilaian, uh, SRP, uh, SPM. But so not getting a first class degree is a glitch. So I decided to do a, a master's. I began my master's in a optical, in, in, in computer networks. And six months into the, uh, the study, things didn't work out. Uh, my supervisor at that time, Prof. Kaha, said, well, well, why don't we go and see uh, another group? And that's when I met uh, Prof. Harif uh, Ahmad, Professor Ulum, uh, who's doing uh, work in optical fibers and optical amplifiers. And that's where I met Professor Dr. Azim Mahdi as well. He's, uh, he's here today, he's present today. He's, uh, he's my mentor, he's a special friend. And actually, I learned lots from Azim in terms of publications and conferences, the differences, and what not to do, what to do, and he actually uh, train me how to actually get things done. Um, but that is also timely because at that point, uh, the government is you know, very forward-looking. They were actually investing in, in optical fibers because optical fibers are the enablers of the internet. Without optical fibers and optical amplifiers, we wouldn't enjoy the kind of connectivity that we have today. So, you know, again, kita, you know, we, can, we can plot but eventually Allah plans for us. And so um, when I joined uh, the research, uh, Optics was part of the, uh, the government's uh, IRPA program under Malaysia Plan 7 and 8. And um, yeah, we began by doing work on this. So my introduction to Optics, I have almost zero knowledge with regards to Optics. It was not covered during my degree and I had to do this. I'm not going to go into the details, but actually optical ampli amplifiers are essentially um, the R and R of kita punya highway. So if optical fibers are highway for data, for lasers, the amplifiers are kita punya R and R. They actually, so if we send optical uh, lasers through optical fibers, eventually they will lose the punya energy, the punya power. You put optical amplifiers there, they will actually amplify and they can actually go travel long distances. And we're talking about long distances. We're talking about a signal going from US all the way to Hong Kong from a single um, uh, submarine cable and so on and so forth. So we need those optical uh, employers. And the group in UM was working with telecom, R&D, and uh, we did this. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was great because over there, actually, I rubbed shoulders with the, the nucleus group of optics in Malaysia came from that lab. So we have Professor Azir, we have the late Professor Khazani, we have Professor Kamil in UITM. So I want all of us actually spread to all of our, uh, the local universities, but we all began in that particular lab. Um, and again, the, the work itself, you know, you don't have to know about fundamentals of optics because, you know, it's just a system. You actually put in of optical fibers and put in the necessary lasers and you get the results. So you can actually get away with a lot of things when you do a master's in this kind of work. Um, I completed my master's in 2001. I joined the academic uh, profession. I went from DS41, a tutor earning about 1,700 ringgit uh, a month to uh, DS45, a lecturer. You get a lecturer in your name card. You feel proud about it. You went along and do your job. I remember for the first, for my first lecture, I prepared what, 40 slides. I was so nervous. I didn't speak without the slides. And I have this wrong impression that if I actually prepare my own slides, my students will be impressed because they think that I'm a, a very hardworking lecturer. Over the years, I think you shouldn't fall into that trap. Doesn't matter where the, the slides come from, as long as you actually teach them well, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't mind. One incident happened where I went to see my dean at that point, I was the, the, the chairman of the sports club, being a young academic. And, you know, I like doing sports, so I was the chairman of the uh, sports club. My job is to go and see the dean to, to, look, to raise money for the club. Um, and the dean was actually looking at my annual performance. Uh, he thought I didn't recognize that. And a conversation struck between myself and him. And uh, I, I look up to this dean, by the way. I look up to him because he was the winner of the uh, 
uh, Young Scientist Award. And I thought, I told myself, if I want to be an academic, I probably should be just like him. Uh, so I put him on, uh, on a pedestal. But on that faithful day, that exchange, the dean said that I was useless. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't contribute to the faculty. So for someone who actually has been, you know, ha had this sort of like a very high work ethics and looking up to, to someone who actually won awards at the national level and for that particular person to say that you are useless, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was shocking. Uh, I couldn't take it. I was considering uh, leaving the academia. Mengajuklah, dua minggu. And then when I come to my senses, we began talking to other accomplished academics in the faculty to see what went wrong. And um, I decided then that I need to do my PhD. So I didn't wait for UM's uh, scholarship. I went around and actually looked for my own scholarship, and it was tough. It was tough, there's a lot of rejection, there's a lot of paperwork, you go to interviews, you get rejected by the Shevening, the Islamic Development, and the Islamic Development Bank, and all sorts. But I was determined to go, and again, it so happens that this project that was run by University of Malaya has to be audited, and one of the auditors came from this famous ORC, Optometric Research Centre. ORC is the place where EDFA, the ampli uh, optical amplifier, was founded. So it seems that the whole thing just conspired with each other. I, meant, I managed to meet my future supervisor, Professor Peter Smith, who was the auditor for this group in UM, without knowing that he will eventually become my uh, supervisor. So I managed to secure the scholarship, and off I went to ORC in 2003, and then I was told I cannot continue on optical amplifiers. I have to jump yet onto another learning curve. And this was the work that I've done, um, which is essentially putting optical circuits onto optical chips, including these things called break, break ratings that I mentioned earlier. Um, one thing that happened though was that I was determined to prove this dean wrong. So when I went there to do my PhD, one, I was advised to have a plan B and plan C. You don't actually just go on one plan for your PhD. Second, there were lots of free training in terms of giving talks, in terms of uh, preparing uh, technical documents. I joined as many as I could, and I actually joined Peter's uh, undergraduate classes as well to see how best to teach optics. So the opportunities were there. Um, and which brings us to these break ratings. Well, break ratings is essentially you send in a, a, a a large component of light into these bright ratings and they usually re reflect just one particular part of that light. So you send a lots of light into this glass and um, you get something that comes back and it goes through this thing called optical fiber circulator, just like a roundabout. And you basically, whatever happens here, whether you stretch or compress this bright rating, you see a shift in this. So that's bright ratings. Um, and this was my uh, workbench. This workbench is actually not my original workbench. This was uh, a workbench that I had to settle for after the second big accident in my uh, academic career, which I've come to later. So this is, uh, these are basically the break ratings. And that's where the samples are. It's very messy, there's a laser source. And uh, apart from this, I was asked to also revive uh, an old equipment by uh, a previous PhD student. So I was working on this. I was also working on break ratings. I was also working on trying to understand the concept of uh, fiber drawing. And uh, so it's, it was tough. It was a very um, steep learning curve. And uh, I wasn't progressing as well as I wanted or I, I wished. And, uh, it was one of those times in your life that you are constantly under pressure. The system in the UK is that you, you go for a master's, you register as an MPhil. You, you know, sorry, you go to a PhD, but you register as an MPhil first. Now, if, if, uh, and then you have to submit a nine-month report and a 15-month report. If you fail that 15-month report, then you go home with an MPhil, and you have to pay back the government, whatever the scholarship. So you had essentially three vivas to get your PhD. Nine months, the 15 months, and the actual viva.
Two weeks into my third year, on a Sunday morning, it was drizzling. I went out from my house at 7 o'clock in the morning because I, I was building uh, momentum with regards to my work. I was walking to, you know, we, we st I was staying within walking distance of the, of the whole facility. Um, and I was prevented from going into the lab. At that point, there was a small fire, apparently. So you can't go in. That small fire eventually became this large, one of the largest, if not the largest, clean, clean room fire in the UK at that time. The initial estimate um, for, you know, because this, this, the, the, the initial estimate for damages was about 120 million pounds. So it's about what, 600 million ringgit if you calculate by, you know, multiply by five. And my office was there. That is where uh, my office is and my lab was somewhere there. So, you, you know, two weeks into my third year, as I was building my momentum, my lab went out in flames. Gone, completely. But for some reason, Alhamdulillah, for some reason, I don't know what was the reason, two months before, this was in October, um, in August, for whatever reason, I decided to back up some of my, my data, and for whatever reason, I decided to bring that backup home. So I, essentially, I just lost about two months' worth of work, whereas some of my colleagues who were working, they were actually at the stage of writing up their thesis. And they lost everything. So in that situation, you don't pay late service. You just, you know, you try to be supportive of each other. Um, and yeah, so you sat there and you think, okay, what, what am I going to do next? Because your scholarship is limited. You really have to get it done by within three and a half years or four years. And the lab went up in flames. So if there's any lesson to learn from this, is obviously nowadays there's no issue with regards to backing up data because you can always put that in the cloud. But there's also this thing about having to quickly pivot and adopt and try to find ways to continue your work. And that particular incident forced me and the group to look for alternatives. And uh, we had to actually use existing samples, whatever. Some of the lab equipment was spared. And this is where I had to actually improvise and work on something called the flat fibers. This will actually produce an international pattern. And it actually formed the basis of what I did when I came back uh, from the UK. So essentially what happened is that we were scouring around for alternatives. We found some previous work that didn't work, uh, which is you take an optical fiber and you actually you squeeze it. You, you, you squeeze it to become flat. And uh, you can actually make an optical chip. You can actually write all those bright gratings in this, but they are essentially very flexible as well. So this is unique, and ORC decided to patent this. Uh, so it has an international patent. Um, and uh, this was one of the chapters in my thesis, and uh, it produced quite a number of uh, publications as well. And eventually, in June 2007, despite the fire, I managed to complete my PhD within three years and seven months, despite the fire. Uh, this was the picture taken after my viva. You can see that I still have hair, although it's already receding by then. Uh, and that's my supervisor, Peter Smith, my internal uh, examiner, Professor Ralph Eason, and uh, my external, Professor Walter Johnston. It was a very small thesis, it's about 120 pages long. The Viva was one hour, sorry, one hour and 40 minutes, 44 questions. I know this because my co-supervisor, Corinne Gawith, actually was, wrote all the questions and uh, we resubmitted that. Um, passed with uh, minor corrections, so I was doctored in June 2007. And then I came back uh, to UM, uh, on the, managed to attend the convocation, came back to UM, and that's when I began my other life as an academic, which is taking on more and more administrative duties. So, we come back in uh, 2007, I became the program coordinator, then head of department, then deputy dean, then become acting dean, and so on and so forth. It never stopped. Um, one of the things that I did when I first came back was I went to see all the experts in optics in Malaysia and asked them what are, their work, what are they working in and where do you see optics going in the next four or five years. So I went to UKM, UPM, MMU, UM itself, and see 
what is the situation of optics in, in Malaysia and uh, the opportunity came when UM actually organized a research expo in 2009 and I participated simply because I wanted to know what this expo is about. I wasn't serious about winning anything. I end up, eventually, my work eventually won the best in engineering, best in category and best of the best. The biggest prize of the day. And um, the prize was given to me by the chairman of the uh, board of UM, uh, to Nasha Ayub, that, at that time he was Tansri Nasha Ayub. And you can see a picture of me wearing collared t-shirt, receiving a prize from the chairman of the board because I wasn't there to, uh, to begin with. I just put my poster, explained to the judges and went back to work. But because of that, I fall into the radar of the, uh, of the top management, uh, Tansri Gauss Jasmine, the VC at that time, was actually looking for research to fund. I fell into his radar and he said, well, what do you want? Uh, what do you need to continue your work? That uh, PhD work that I've uh, completed, I've managed to, again, as I said, uh, patent an international, file an international patent for high-impact journals, 19 conference papers, and I won three awards while I was in the, um, in the UK. And um, when I look around, I found that Malaysia, or even the region, do not have a facility to make optical fibers for research purposes. So I took the risk and actually applied for money to actually make an optical fiber making facility, which was a very, you know, it was it was a, a very risky uh, move. And I remember that I had to go and present to the top management on my 34th birthday, um, you know, asking money for 799,420 ringgit and 20 cent <laughs> to build an optical fiber. And I put, in the, in the last slide for the top management, I said, well, if all the things that I've said didn't convince you, the last slide has my IC there and said, today is my birthday. So perhaps you can give me because it's my birthday. And I managed to get the approval. That is the most expensive birthday present I ever received to build an optical fiber when I was 34. Uh, so when we built this, we completed this, uh, this work. It became become the first of its kind in the region. And it was, uh, you know, it proved to be the a good investment because all the groups in Malaysia came to us for us to make them optical fibers. So these are all optical fibers. These are cross-section of optics. So imagine this is your hair. So this is the size of your hair and we can actually put all these features in the cross-section of your hair. That's the technology that we have now in Malaysia. And um, six months into the operation, People came back to us wanting for more fibers and they are willing to pay. And we decided to actually form our spin-off company to commercialize these optical fibers. So Flex Liquid was formed. Myself and Dr. Rafo, the, the founder, we received 50,000 ringgit from the University of Malaya. And um, we monopolized the whole fiber market when it comes to research. So the going was good. And we run this uh, on a part-time basis. We create jobs for our PhD candidates while they are waiting for their results before they move on. Our master's students, we, we put internship uh, position for uh, UM students. And five years, you know, within, within a, a year of its uh, formation, FlexLicate won two awards. One is the best uh, startup in a Southeast Asia university and also best in commercialization. We were making roughly about 120,000 to 200,000 a year just the two of us on part-time basis. And uh, you know, we pay our uh, PhD students to also run the company. And uh, five years down the road, FlexLicate now produced samples for NASA, for John Hopkins University, for Columbia University, for Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and uh, a bunch of startups from all over the world. We don't have customers from Malaysia, unfortunately. We have customers all over the world, from Brazil, from Poland, from Canada, and it's still going. Although it's getting more difficult because I'm here now um, and I cannot actually be in UM to run the, the, uh, the spin-off and we're actually considering to, um, to expand this. Uh, FlexLicket provide all these custom-made optical fibers. We also do micro-capillaries for RT-PCRs. 
So people know now RT-PCR because of COVID. But RT-PCR actually use all these micro capillaries. We're trying to produce this for industries. And we also have these uh, small cylinders which find usage in uh, health-related sensors as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that happens in 2015. Um, so again, I was, uh, I was running the, uh, I was part of the top management of UM. I also have a startup. I was running my research group. And I think in 2015 as well, I was also appointed as the executive director of UM Holdings, the holdings company. So I was wearing lots of hat at that point of time. And yes, it was very busy, but it's also extremely exciting as well. And I think um, I'd like to share this with um, the young academics who are watching this today, that you know, it is possible. If you put your mind to it, you can actually do with all this. You know, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. During that time as well, I picked up the Best in Teaching Award, and also I picked up the Best, in, uh, um, the best Dean Award by, given by UM as well. So, um, you know, you, if you put your mind to it, you can actually put lots of things on your plate and you can still deliver, inshallah. How much time do you have? Okay. Um, one thing that we also notice is that when we use BRAC gratings, we want to move into medical devices. We think um, we can do lots of things by marrying optics with, with uh, all things medical. And personally, I suffered from dengue, it was very painful. Dengue affects about 100 and 250 million people worldwide with about 10% um, fatality, if you like. So an opportunity presented itself, we wanted to use BRAC ratings. We want, so initially we applied BRAC ratings as sensor for Azman's uh, artificial limb. We also applied BRAC ratings to buildings, but now we want to apply BRAC ratings to send if there are any diseases in our blood. But break ratings didn't make for good, um, good sensors, so we moved to another technology called Plasmon. So basically, we have a chip the size of that. That is, you know, the, the, that's the 10 cent in the coin, and that's the chip that we've uh, come up with. Uh, unfortunately, this is the lab bench that we have to use to get the results from this chip that is able to detect dengue, all four, strand, all four strains of dengue, within one hour. So the idea was, if you can do this, you can actually put this sensor in all the clinics and you don't have to send blood samples to lab and people have to wait for 24 hours for the results to come back. So you can get from one hour and you can tell whether someone has dengue or not. Um, so we went on to ask for a pre-commercialization grant worth 1.9 million under British, uh, under Unko Omar, Newton Unko Omar funds. And um, yeah, that project worked in the sense that we managed to miniaturize this big bench. I think this is about two meters long for a chip that small because of the stability issue. And we managed to reduce that into this. So we have a chip in there. We can actually put blood sample in here and we can detect dengue within 45 minutes. And this, this particular setup is currently undergoing clinical trials in PPUM. Hopefully we get the numbers, we can prove that this works, and then we can actually put more engineering so that it becomes very small, handheld, can be used by doctors, and everyone can actually test if they have dengue. But the same technology can also be extended to include other diseases, not just dengue, chikungunya, uh, and all other blood-born diseases. So that's an ongoing work. Uh, by, that, by, by now, I have to leave to join uh, USM. And uh, one of the last things that I've been working in before I, 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 I uh, moved to USM was let's push, the, let's, let's push the bar further. This requires blood samples. You have to prick someone and get the sample out. What can, you know, can we move it further by being non-invasive? And so one of my students, uh, Dr. Halim Po, dabbled with that question, can we remove this portion where we have to actually introduce blood to our sensors and do it um, non-invasively? So he came up with a solution. This is a large uh, prototype where you can actually just, just shine a laser onto your skin and pick up the uh, reflectance and you can tell 
whether someone has dengue or not. These are the early results. You can tell a female or male patient by doing this, although of course you can tell by looking at the patient, but that the mats behind it managed to actually um, isolate those, na those, those, those uh, patients. But these are the early results where you can see that these are people with dengue, these are suspected one, and these are the, the one without dengue. So it's a very encouraging initial result. Halim went on to actually surround this with engineering, and we are now working on a handheld device. So it's just like that big. You can shine on people, and you can see whether someone has dengue or not as a screening mechanism. So that's the work, uh, the most recent work. And uh, yeah, that's basically the, the research what I've done. Uh, over the years, and um, well, this is just a, a prank by my group members, you know, to give me a pipe or so. And uh, this is the picture of me taken after we won that uh, House of Common Award. Again, as you can see, early on I had hair. A um, couple of things there that I like to share. As you can see from the uh, from the journey, it wasn't a smooth sailing journey. There's plenty of accident and challenges as well. Um, but I do believe that. If you do it well and you continue doing it because you believe in the technology, it's not about your promoting your career progress and whatnot, then I think it will be extremely rewarding. Uh, I'm blessed with the fact that uh, for some reason, because we offer a challenging research work, I managed to actually, the group managed to actually attract the best uh, of UM and the best of UPMs and the best of UKMs. Some of my students are the, the best in their um, batch. They chose not to join um, the private sector. They chose to join and to be researchers, partly because I was involved in uh, elective and also teaching masters by mixed mode. I have 14 weeks to actually promote the technology to create excitement among them and to tell them that these are all very challenging work at the edge of knowledge, at the edge of technology, would you like to join us? And uh, it works. So when you have all those uh, you know, amazing talents, then you know, your work is, um, you will create lots of important work. That's the first thing. Second, we always see that we are just the enablers. Um, my students, one of, one of the most rewarding things about being a, you know, leading a research group is that how do you, you know, how, how your students progress once they leave your group. And I'm, I'm happy to, to, to share that most of my master's students get to pursue their PhD in some of the top most research centers in the world fully sponsored because of the exposure that we gave our students. You know? So we, we know that UM put a lot of emphasis on publication. So we did that. Uh, the, the high impact research I failed to mention was 6.2 million when I actually secured that to build the optical tower. But in return, University of Malaya expected 60 Q1 or Q2 papers and about 20 patents. So you have to deal with that. You have to actually deliver that. But at the same time, you do not want to be narrow in what you do. You afford your students to attend the necessary conferences, um, you know, get in touch, appoint co-supervisors from prestigious uh, universities, and if they need to go elsewhere to do your pay, to do their PhD, that exposure is extremely, extremely valuable. And so, yeah, I have my students now in Harvard Medical School. My students are now in the ORC. Two of them are in the ORC, where I did my PhD, fully sponsored. One of them went to Bath, where this uh, fantastic, fantastically called complicated uh, optical fibers were invented. Those, and managed to pursue their PhD with the person who actually invented all those. But these are perhaps some of the things that are, that are intangible rewards if you do your job well. And uh, with that, I'd like to conclude my, uh, my talk. Um, obviously, I received lots and lots of assistance from a lot of people. Um, and I'm blessed that you know, I've managed to rub shoulders with giants, people like Aze, um, people like Peter, uh, Peter Smith, who also have uh, a spin-off while I was doing my PhD there. And uh, yeah, everyone has been very supportive. And uh, before I go, I'd like to again thank everyone who organized this uh, particular talk, everyone who has been involved in my personal life, in my uh, professional life, and uh, there are too many people to, to name. And uh, again, 
Thank you so much, and I hope you've enjoyed that uh, talk and you managed to follow some of the technical ones. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, salam sejahtera. Terima kasih, Profesor Datuk Dr. Fasar Rafi. Perkongsian ilmu sebentar tadi sedikit sebanyak telah membuka minda kita untuk memahami dengan lebih jelas mengenai gegentian dalam bidang fotonik yang berpotensi untuk digunakan pada masa yang akan datang. Dipersilakan yang berbahagia Dato untuk kembali semula ke tempat duduk kenamaan. Hadirin dan hadirat yang dihormati sekalian, bagi mengetahui dengan lebih lanjut, marilah kita sama-sama menyaksikan tayangan multimedia yang telah disediakan oleh Creative Media Production PTM University Sains Malaysia. Dipersilakan. Saya ingin mengucapkan selamat berjaya kepada yang berbahagia Datuk Profesor Faizal Rafiq di atas syarahan umum pelantikan profesor yang akan disampaikan. Saya yakin syarahan ini akan mendapat sambutan baik dan menjadi perangsang kepada seluruh warga USM. Saya yang humble dan very focus walaupun umurnya uh, nak dikirakan lebih muda daripada saya dan telah menunjukkan kematangan dalam banyak tindakan untuk memimpin universiti. He put this tagline to motivate the staff, the students, everyone here at USM which he says we will nail it. So when whenever I see this in a signboard, I feel like really uh, want to put some encouragement, some efforts to to move forward. Uh, Datuk ni bila dia turun padang ni, dia 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 betul-betul yang kata apa? Uh, tidak tidak menganggap dia ni sebagai seorang uh, pegawai tertinggi universiti lah. Kalau kata kita tak kenal Datuk Rafiq ni, kita tak tahu dia ialah uh, Night Chancellor USM. Beliau merupakan seorang pemimpin yang humble, yang looking forward, bekerja kuat dan juga seorang yang people person. I feel that I'm so proud to have a VC to lead us, to lead USM. One thing that always stressed in my mind and always instilled in my heart is towards we lead. 
Jadi setiap pagi jumpa dia, setelah pagi Datuk Dia akan beritahu, dah sarapan ke belum? Jadi dia begitu simple man lah nak, nak, nak ber, berkomunikasi dengan dia cukup senang Yang saya amat kagum, beliau seorang yang rajin membaca boleh dikatakan setiap minggu ataupun setiap bulan ada sahaja buku baru yang dibelinya. Kita pun menjadi semangat untuk uh, turut serta. Uh, we are always very proud of him. Not just uh, for me, uh, not just uh, his achievement in his career. For me, the one that I'm proud lagi adalah the way he uh, he work for it. Uh, because now he is uh, carrying the BC USM pose so is the same like the Arsenal team lah now is the Mikel Atata Ateta is uh, doing the coach and manager whatever happened to that uh, team uh, they will blame the coach or the manager or even success they will uh, puji lah the coach and the manager so it's the same with the USM lah so I hope that USM will fly high doing well in all areas and also hope Arsenal win some trophies lah this year I think I speak on behalf of me and Sarah when I say this is that um, we've, always, we've always wanted to make you proud and um, the thing about being a, being a child I guess a lot of people can relate is that you can't really say that you've actually done enough for your parents you know so uh, uh, yeah and even though when they say you know you you know you, you did good you, you you've succeeded a little last little bit yeah at the back of our heads me and Sarah we've always felt like uh, we we could always do more. We could always make you uh, prouder than you were yesterday. So, yeah, I mean that there's a pressure of that, but that's on us. You know, it wasn't. It's not your fault. You know, we we we're the one who, we're the one who's we're the ones who want to make you happy. I, I, I hope you enjoy this video and um, good luck with your speech. I love you. I'll see you soon. Um, I always want to make sure that he's proud of me and I become someone he can boast about and that he's always happy um, and that I always contribute to him in, in this world and uh, the world hereafter. He works very hard. Um, he works at night, he works on weekends, he works on weekdays. Like I'm the type of person who works for 10 hours and then I'll sleep for 12 hours and then I'll watch K-dramas for the next 4 hours. <laughs> but he works consistently and he makes sure that the output of his work is very sharp and precise. I really do think that he is the most deserving of the places that he's been and the places he is now and to give the speech that he's giving or has given today uh, and so I just want to say congratulations to Abah and also thank you for the uh, great awesome dad. Uh, character yang saya sangat-sangat kagumi dengan abang saya, dia sangat-sangat bermatlamat tinggi, bercita-cita tinggi. Dan dia akan berusaha sedaya upaya untuk mencapai cita-cita yang ingin dicapai tu. Itulah yang saya sangat kagumi dengan abang saya. Okay. Akhir sekali, saya ingin ucapkan tahniah dan selamat maju jaya dalam apa saja yang ingin abang capai. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Dia uh, seorang yang tegas, firm dalam buat keputusan pasal adik-adik, pasal mak ayah semua tapi at the same time dia seorang yang kelakar juga uh, boleh dibuat berbincang uh, dengan anak-anak buah pun semua memang sayang dengan dia uh, tapi uh, put aside dia tu sebagai abang sulung dia seorang yang bertanggungjawab dan sekarang pun lepas adik-adik dah besar semua dah rumah tangga dia masih lagi menjalankan tanggungjawab dia sebagai seorang abang sulung sebagai anak sulung dan uh, dia banyak memberi sokongan dari segi uh, moral, dari, dari segi bagi nasihat, keuangan uh, Nak menangkan semua panggil dia Pak Cak uh, Dengan cerita dah pernah cakap Penang ke? Hmm, ok, anyway, all the best, Tania Dan semoga maju jaya dengan UX Masa dia buat master dekat Universiti Malaya Kawan-kawan dia yang great sekali Ada yang kerja dengan lain gas ada kerja dengan telco sekali naik gaji sampai RM300 RM300 dia kat UM naik gaji semasa tu RM70 kan eh. tapi sedikit pun tak ada rasa sesalan salah pilih kerjaya apa saya tanya dia kenapa abang 
tak join online gas ke telco masa waktu-waktu tu dia cakap satu je impian dia kerja ni nak tolong bahasa sendiri nak nak sebalik mara yang dah tanggung dia belajar selama ni but i think all of you know there are probably two rafiqs there's one rafiq who's very studious hard working um quite serious at times and i think that was the first rafiq that i met um i recall visiting at the university of malaya and 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 first coming across rafiq and being impressed thinking he's a very serious young scientist and then of course i got to know the second rafiq um the one with the twinkly eyes the the slightly mischievous one the the one with the energy that's the the leader one and um yeah i just just it's a it's something i have to say that i'm incredibly proud that rafiq was my student and i now count him as as a colleague and a friend we've we've published together we've ha- had many ideas together as he's been an exemplary host when i've been in malaysia and he's is always a pleasure yeah so professor rafiq is a man that have very skill from a good researcher a brilliant uh, scientist and also a good administrator if i i'm very sure he being a vice chancellor is a very big plus point for university of malaya because he will bring a lot of changes that i think that could transform usm to a world class university and i think it would be the premier university in this country so professor rafi is a person that you want to watch saya amat yakin dan mempunyai keyakinan yang amat tinggi beliau akan berjaya menjadi seorang penyelidik yang terkemuka di dalam bidang optik. Rafiq is a humble person, a visionary leader and a good friend. Sepanjang hidup saya, saya belum pernah lagi berjumpa dengan seorang leader yang sanggup mengaku kesalahan beliau secara terbuka. Saya rasa Pro Rafiq merupakan sahabat yang sangat setia, jujur dan ikhlas dalam memberikan sebarang pendapat, pandangan dan juga apabila sama-sama dalam aktiviti berkumpulan dan sebagainya beliau sangat menunjukkan kematangan yang lebih daripada kami rakan-rakan yang sesuai dengan beliau. Mula-mula masa dia form 1 tu he's very quiet. Very quiet. But one thing he is very determined. Kalau dia nak apa-apa, dia nak buat, dia buat juga. Dia panggil lah kawan-kawan dia untuk buat juga sampai dapat. And then he got a good result. He pursue his studies in RSM Taipei. There, pakatnya mula menonjol sebagai seorang pemimpin. Dia rajin uh, giving ideas and then promote the friends to help him with the idea. So that's how I know him. A very determined person. And when he did something, he will follow through until finish. Congratulations, Abah. We love you, Abah. Ah, kekuatan Profesor Dato yang penuh semangat juang dan kejayaan. Kita berikan tepukan gemuruh sekali lagi buat Profesor Dato Rafiq. Hadirin yang dihormati sekalian, permandangan indah, cahaya taufik, air jernih mengalir ke sungai seni. Demikianlah titipan kehidupan Prof Rafiq Pakas Fiber Teknologi Fotonik. Hadirin, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dihormati sekalian, terima kasih sekali lagi satu persembahan multimedia yang cukup berkesan. Semoga kejayaan ini menjadi pemangkin kepada hadirin untuk mencapai kejayaan yang lebih gemilang untuk melonjakkan nama USM di pentas dunia. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dihormati sekalian, sesungguhnya Pusat Pengajian Kejuteraan Elektrik dan Elektronik amat berbangga dengan perlantikan Profesor Datuk Dr. Fasal Rafiq Muhammad Adikan sebagai Profesor Penuh Universiti Sains Malaysia. 
Sebagai tanda penghargaan dan berkongsi meraihkan kegembiraan ini, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput Profesor Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Fadil Ain untuk mengeringi Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq sekali lagi mengambil tempat di atas pentas. Hadirin sekalian, menyusur sungai dengan sampan, sampan didayung penuh perhatian, warga II berkongsi kegembiraan, penyampaian cenderahati, tanda penghargaan. Dengan ini, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput Profesor Ing Senior Dr. Muhammad Fadil Ain bagi pihak Pusat Pengajian Kejuteraan Elektrik dan Elektronik untuk menyampaikan cenderahati kepada Profesor Datuk Rafiq sebagai tanda kenangan dan juga bukti kegembiraan. Seterusnya, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput Profesor Datuk Insinyur Dr. Abdul Rahman Muhammad, Timbalan Naib Chancellor Penyelidikan dan Inovasi Universiti Sains Malaysia untuk menyampaikan cenderahati kepada Profesor Datuk Rafiq. Dimohon untuk Profesor Datuk Rahman kekal di pentas. Hadirin sekalian, seterusnya, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput Encik Muhammad Rashid Abdul Rajab, timbalan pendaftar untuk menyampaikan hadiah dari Pejabat Naib Chancellor kepada Profesor Datuk Rafiq. Dipersilakan. Dimohon untuk Encik Muhammad Rashid kekal berada di atas pentas. Seterusnya, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput Puan Nur Iliani Ahmad Ghazali untuk menyampaikan hadiah dari Klub Kebajikan dan Rekreasi Pejabat Naib Chancellor kepada Profesor Datuk Rafiq. Dipersilakan. Dimohon untuk Puan Nur Iliani kekal berada di atas pentas. Hadirin yang dihormati sekalian, seterusnya majlis dengan segala hormatnya ingin menjemput Dr. Ahmad Zulman Muhammad Zain pengarah MPRC untuk menyampaikan hadiah kepada Profesor Datuk Dr. Faisal Rafiq. Dipersilakan. Diminta semua yang berada di atas pentas untuk sesi fotografi sebagai tanda kenangan.
Jutaan terima kasih kepada semua. Dijemput semua yang berada di atas pentas untuk mengambil tempat duduk di bawah. Hadirin dan hadirat tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian, majlis telah hampir ke noktahnya. Para peserta boleh mengimbas QR kod yang dipaparkan untuk tujuan mata CPD USM. Hadirin dan hadirat, akhir kata, saya bagi pihak Pusat Pengajian Kejuruteraan Elektrik dan Elektronik Majlis merakamkan ucapan ribuan terima kasih di atas kesudian tuan-tuan dan puan-puan melapangkan masa untuk hadir ke majlis kita pada petang ini. Semoga ilmu baru ini dapat menyuntik minda ke arah membangunkan satu inovasi yang boleh dimanfaatkan oleh negara. Saya juga ingin memohon maaf di atas sebarang kekurangan sepanjang majlis berlangsung. Segak dan tampan si anak raja penuh hormat berbudi tinggi berpisah kita di sini sahaja insya-Allah lain kali kita bersua lagi dengan itu sekian wabillahi taufik wal hidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh terima kasih diminta para kenamaan dan tetamu untuk berdiri bagi sesi fotografi